Microsoft Copilot is finally here. There's been a ton of new Excel features recently, but this takes it to a whole nother level. So in this comprehensive guide, let's go over how to use it in Microsoft Excel, in PowerPoint for slide making, and in Outlook for drafting emails. As of this video, it's still only available to a select few customers, but let me show you how it can save hours of time. First up with Copilot in Excel, you can see over here that we have a small table just to experiment with. So if we go over to the home tab, you're going to find the Copilot all the way to the right. So let's just click on that to activate it. Once the dialog box is open over here, it needs to convert the data that we currently have into a table. So we can just hit on convert there to do so. All right, now we can either type our requests down over here, or we can go by their suggested categories where they have these four. So let's go over the first one of adding formula columns. We'll just click on that. And let's suppose that we want to merge the first two columns, the first and the last, simply to name and have them together. So I could type here something like merge first and last column into one, add space between them and hit enter. So here's the suggestion and you can see it's basically made this formula for us. And we can either click over here to get it explained or we can just insert a new column with it we can have it previewing over on the side. You can see there that it's called it full name and it's basically merged the max and the first happen. Without Copilot, we would have had to know how to use this formula completely on our own. Now, what about numerical formulas? So let's suppose here that we wanna find the profit margin. So we can add add new column for profit margin and just hit enter there. We haven't actually told it what the formula is for profit margin, which is just profit divided by revenue, but let's see if it's able to figure that out. Awesome, so it's given us this suggestion over here and it's telling us the formula, which is the profit divided by the revenue. And that's all looking good there. We can just click on insert there and we can find that we have the same profit margin of 35% throughout. So it works pretty well with formulas. And now let's take a look at some of the highlight options so if we scroll back up, you see we have this highlight feature. So let's try using that one. For example, we could ask it highlight the highest revenue and hit enter there. You can see there that it's identified the revenue column and within it, it's highlighted this one over here as the highest. Now that's still a simple example. What if we add some kind of an if condition there? So for example, only highlight the clients that have less than 20 customers. So we can go ahead and type highlight clients at less than 20 and hit enter. Awesome. You can see there that it's been able to detect these three clients. Now, if I change this figure to a 10, you'll notice that it also gets detected. So it's actually fully dynamic as well. Next up, we can test how well it works for sorting and filtering. So if we scroll back up, we can just click on the sort and filter option. And from here, let's suppose that we want to um, sort the revenue from high to low and see what happens there. You'll notice there that it's been able to sort everything from highest to lowest. Now that's still a fairly simple example. Maybe a slightly harder one can be to only filter by those that have a profit above certain amounts. So maybe we can say only select select the profit of the top five maybe instead of only select filter for the profit of the top five awesome you can see there that it's only filtered by the top five and we can now say to remove all filters and it should do that nicely great so you can see there it's quite a powerful tool but we haven't quite tried it yet with any kind of visuals so let's take a look at how we can do that with the analyze button over here. So let's click on that analyze. Let's suppose that we want to just find some insights. So what are some insights about the data set? Hit enter there. Let's see what it says. You'll notice that I have made a typo, but let's see if it's still able to interpret that. And you can see here that it's actually generated this pivot chart. If we click on add to a new sheet, just for us to see better, you can see that this is a pivot table, as you can see by that pop-up there, and it's showing the number of clients by the star ratings. If 
we go back over here, we can also ask it for specific charts. Like maybe it can be uh, create a column chart by revenue for each full name. Awesome. You can see there what is generated. I can click on add to new sheet just for you to see that this analyze feature is actually very similar to the analyze data that we already had in Excel previously. While Copilot is looking very exciting, it does have some flaws. So let me show you some examples of that. Let's suppose that we want to remove Esteban Picon over here. So we can type it, remove Esteban Picon row and just hit enter there. You'll notice that it actually isn't able to do it. Let's see what it says. Like I anticipated, it says here, I'm sorry, but I couldn't perform the actions you requested. And instead, it just tells you the steps to go ahead and do them yourself. Another notable flaw is that it doesn't quite work if you have two tables and you want to ask it, say, to merge them. Things like that don't quite work. Same thing goes with data that's outside of a table. I have this cell here selected for now and it's saying, hey, I only work with an Excel table. So we're actually unable to type anything down below unless we're inside of the table format. That's an overview of Copilot in Excel. So let's now take a look at it in PowerPoint. Over here, you can see that I have a presentation which is completely blank. And under the Home tab, I can click on Copilot just like before. Within this, we can either click down over here under View Prompts to see some of the suggestions of what we might be able to ask it or simply you can just type whatever you want. Let's say I have something in mind like this over here where I have make a five slide presentation on creating an excellent company culture. Great, you'll notice there that it's generated five different slides kind of outlining the key steps. If we take a look down over here under notes, you'll realize that it's also generated some notes for us, maybe in the case of a presentation. What if we also want a table of content slide well, we can simply request one, like can you add a slide after a title slide with the table of contents? Awesome, you can see there that it's created a table of contents slide with some of the titles. That said, that first title over here, building a company culture that works, is actually the one that you would have in the title, so that's a bit of a mistake there. While all of these are specific edits to the PowerPoint slides, we can also ask it to interpret it. For example, let's suppose we want to ask it what are the three main takeaways from the presentation? While we wait for this to generate, something like this can be really useful to send as an email in the form of a summary and the PowerPoint slides attached. So if we take a look over here at what it said, here's a summary of the deck and it's got the main ideas. That said, they're not exactly three, they are a few more than that, but you kind of get the idea of how it can work. So far, pretty impressive, but we still have Outlook. So let's take a look at that one. We can just click on new email over here. Let me make it full screen. You'll notice within that, that we have type slash two draft with Copilot. You can also activate it with this button over here. So let's go ahead and start typing. You'll notice we get this pop-up and suppose we want to say that we're out of office. So I've just put that I'll be out of office until January 5th due to surgery. Let's see if it's able to make it a bit fancier than that. Awesome, you can see there that it's made it a lot fancier with I would like to inform you that I'll be out of office. And then it's just added some supplemental text after that, like during this time, going to be unable to respond to emails and so on and so forth. So it's really a lot better than what we wrote. That's a fairly easy email though, so let's make something slightly harder, like for example, a meeting with an investor. So I've said that meeting with our investors went great, and they're going to be investing a further 5 million. Let's go ahead and see what it has to say there. This is starting to look great. I'm happy to report that our meeting with investors went very well. They're impressed with our progress and they've agreed to invest an additional 5 million in our company and so on and so forth. So it looks a lot more professional. Alongside drafting emails, there is also a coaching tool, which you can also find up over here under coaching by Copilot. What this one does is it actually guides you as you write an email and sets your tone as opposed to changing your words directly. So you can see here, I have some text that I've generated and I can go over to coaching by Copilot where it's gonna start analyzing the email. From here, it's going to tell me what my tone is and how it could be improved. And it's also giving me some suggestions of text as well as the reader sentiment and they sound excited, which is good. 
and some clarity where maybe I could add a few more details. So that's co coaching by Copilot. So you can see overall Copilot is a huge upgrade and something that's going to make you a lot more productive. Unfortunately, it's not yet available for everyone. So if you wanna be productive today, check out this video over here to save you hours of time or take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.